Hey guys, it's the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to simulate failure. I love working digital data modes mostly because it allows me to do things like text messaging, email, and all over HF radio. In a lot of cases, the way that interface works is we need a computer, we need our transceiver, and for most of my radios, I don't have a built-in cat control interface and a built-in uh, digital mode interface that can deal with processing audio in and out. So for the last few years, I have been using a device like the DigiRig Mobile or the DigiRig Lite. So this is the first component that can technically fail, but there's no reason for us not to use digital data modes just because there can be a failure. The important thing is to realize what we do if this device dies. Now, to make matters worse, we also need to interface something like the DigiRig Mobile with our radio. So we have a second component. We've got the cable interface and this will go into the mic port as well as the data port that gets the audio in and out. And then the last piece we have our USB-C cable. This goes into our audio device, the DigiRig Mobile, and then we have to connect this to your computer. So this is primarily what I run in the field. Now the big question is what happens if any three of these components fail? So to solve this problem, it's really straightforward. We just have to go back to basics and understand what's happening. So under the hood, when a station is transmitting, all they're doing is transmitting audio tones and our sound card is capturing those audio tones by our microphone. And then when it's our turn to transmit, we are playing audio tones over the speaker. This is why I've always said, by turning up your speaker gain, you are increasing your ability to be heard. Really straightforward. And then the DigiRig Mobile is also pushing that push to talk button for us, which we've got thumbs, we can do that ourselves. So let's go ahead on over the bench and we'll show you how this works in practice without a DigiRig and without those two cables. Let's take a first look at our transceiver. So I have the TX500MP. Since we don't have any cables connecting it to the computer, I went ahead and manually set the frequency to the frequency we want to work. Number two, I set the mode to upper sideband instead of the digital mode. And then we'll also have to increase the volume here shortly. So all we have is the speaker hand mic connected. In order to transmit, I will have to manually, with good timing, press this down. And then uh, in order to get the audio sent across, we're gonna have to put this close to the speaker here. But before we can do that, we're gonna have to make a couple of changes to GSA call. Number one, we're gonna have to go to file, settings. We're gonna to wanna to go to radio and we're gonna to wanna to disable the cat control interface altogether. So I'll scroll all the way to the top here and select none. Number two, for PTT method, we're going to use Vox, even though there is no Vox circuit. The Vox circuit will be me pressing down the push to talk button. Next up, we need to change the audio input and output. Right now it's set to the device that is connected to this 7300 here or 7200. And we wanna make sure we set it to the speaker and microphone. So I wanna have the input device, the microphone set to the onboard microphone directly on this tablet. And then for the output or the speaker, I wanna make sure it's set to the computer speakers on this guy over here. All right, so just so we can see, if I hit tune, we'll hear tone over the speakers. Now, the next thing we're going to do is gonna blow out your ears. So if you're wearing headphones, please take them out. I'm gonna hit the tune button and then key down on the radio. And what we wanna see is the TX meter uh, get to around eight to 10 watts of output power. So we're gonna hit tune and it will be loud, guys. We're gonna key down. And you can see we're getting about seven to nine watts. So for JSA call, since it's the mode we're working with, we have to be cognizant of two things. Number one, our time still does need to be synced within two seconds of all other stations. And number two, we have to take a good look at the frames. We're doing 15 second frames. That means there's 15 seconds to transmit and 15 seconds to receive. And once we're about to receive and prepare a message, when we get to the 14 second mark, we need to key down and start transmitting. And we're gonna do that for 15 seconds. So at this point, let's go ahead and do a couple of things. I want to get ready to send a heartbeat here. 
and I'm also gonna have to blow out your ears again. We're gonna have to set the volume here so that we can hear what we are receiving. Okay, so we are receiving audio right now. The waterfall is actually displaying whatever is here and we have to be quiet. So I need to be quiet while we're doing this test, at least on the receive side. So the first thing I wanna do is wait till we get to the next transmit cycle. Okay, and in a few seconds here, we're gonna transmit. We're gonna go ahead and click heartbeat. And I'm gonna to have to key down here once it gets to 14 of 15. You can see there, I actually got a request back from KK7UMM. So as you can see here, we did get a response back and we were using the speakers here and the microphone on the tablet was picking that up and we got a proper decode. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed that little demo. It's not perfect. I don't uh, recommend that people do this as standard practice, but this is one of the ways when you have a gear failure that is related to maybe your digital mode interface or the cables, you can do this technique, which we call acoustic coupling. This is one of those things that we've had in the computer telephony field for Basically, it's inception. The early computers, when they would be networked over the telephone line, had something called an acoustic coupler. People would take the modem that they had in their computer, the acoustic coupler that was attached to that, and their plain old telephone, their touchtone phone, dial up the number of the machine or computer they wanted to connect to, and then put the uh, handset directly on the coupler, and it was doing the same thing. Uh, it was sending out uh, tones over the uh, speaker and then it was recording the incoming audio. We have done the exact same thing. Again, the tricky part is just figuring out how to time the uh, push to talk. So just to recap, all we did was when we wanted to transmit, I held down the push to talk here and then captured the audio that was coming out of my computer's speakers. At the moment that I want to receive, I unkeyed, then allowed the microphone that was built into the computer to capture the audio it was receiving out of the hand mic. Anyways, guys, uh, this was just something that I wanted to play with today. It worked the first time out. Uh, also make sure, especially with modes like JS8 Call, you wanna be in a quiet area. Don't be talking while this is going on because all of that will uh, be carried over and transmitted. So this is one of the reasons why you do want a dedicated device for doing digital mode operation. Now I do have some experience earlier on FM doing other types of acoustic coupling, but they were modes that were designed for high noise environments like noisy emergency operation centers. Probably should do a video on that in the future too. Anyways guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.